Okay, so I'm going to show how to disassemble an Inspiron 15 Series 5000, uh, this one specifically, a 5559. Um, so first what you want to do is remove the battery. Um, this one actually has a bad power button, so I can't do the thing where I hold the power button. Um, well, actually I can, So, but you'll have to have the replacement button. So. I have that here. I'll show you how you can do that. And actually, this is how you can actually test the power button before you completely install it. So first, what you want to do, um, you can remove the keyboard first. It has tabs on it, just like the 15 uh, 3000 series. So same thing. You just pop these out. All right. Once you get those tabs out, you should be able to lift this up, put some pressure on the side here while you lift this to flex it. Same thing with the other side. Okay, then you can lift this up, pull it out a little bit. Be careful because the cables are underneath. So what you want to do, flip the tabs up, pull this cable out. Same thing with this one, flip the tab up, pull this cable out. So I already tested the, test the power button, but I'll show you. So the power button actually connects right here. So make sure to um, keep an eye on which way these tabs are and which way the pins go when you replace stuff. I've had someone connect these upside down on their computer before. So what you want to do is take that, plug in the other one. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. And also make sure you can see. Oh, I guess I'll just... Sorry, you probably won't be able to see this, but anyways, you just plug it in, the new cable, just like the other one. Let's see here. Uh, there we go. Alright. It's hard to do this with one hand. Okay. So anyways, once you got that other one plugged in, can press and hold the button. Um, if your power button's fine, you don't need to do this. Just press and hold your power button. Okay, so press and hold it. Drain the power. All right. Let's do that. Remove that. Okay. So this is the connector for the CD drive. You want to remove that. And then the touchpad connector. You want to remove that just in case. You might not have to, but. It's always nice to do it just so you don't have to worry about going back to it later. Okay. Yep. And then you want to remove the screws that are in here. There's one, two, um, three, four, five, six screws under here. All right. Once you do that, you can close the screen, flip it over, remove the screws on the back here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is for the CD drive. Okay, seven, and then eight, and nine here. So once you remove that screw, you can pull the CD drive out. If the CD drive is difficult to remove, you can do the same trick as I did on the 3000 series, where you put a needle in this hole and wiggle it around, the CD slot will come out, and then you can use the you can pull on the tray instead of pulling on this because if this is stuck you don't want to pull too hard or this piece the plastic part that holds it to the cd drive can break so once you do that you'll notice there will be three more screws under here okay once you get all those screws out then you want to remove this cover just pull up on this there's a little gap it might be a little tough um, just yank on it like that and sometimes you can like flex it a little to get it to come out a little bit easier. You do that on both sides, all the way down. All right, and then you can take that out, set it aside. All right, then you want to remove the screws from the bottom here. Um, so there'll be one screw here. There'll be four holding the hard drive in place. And then you'll have another screw right here. Um, then you'll have I think, another screw here, and then two screws here, and one more screw here. So once you got all of those out, you can go ahead and take this, the hard drive out. So just flip that up. And then there's a little tab here that you can use to pull on the hard drive to lift it up. And don't pull too hard. Make sure to be careful with the cable so you don't damage it. 
Okay, set that aside. If you want, you can now place it with an SSD. Just move the bracket and the connector to the SSD or replacement hard drive. Okay. And then I gotta remove this for the wireless card. So take this out. Make sure you keep it the same way. Um, this metal thing actually has a little um, piece on it, as you can see, that will keep it in. So make sure when you take it out, when you put it back, that you put it back the same way. Otherwise, that metal part that sticks out can like damage here. Okay, and then to remove the antennas, just pull up on the back like that, and they'll come out easily. Okay. And move the wires aside. Okay, and then the wireless card, there's a little plastic tab here that's kind of in the way. So what I do to remove it, to remove the wireless card is um, this part's raised up. So I actually just pull on that and kind of wiggle it like that. Okay. There you go, set that aside as well. The wireless cables are going to kind of be in the way of the plastic um, casing when you remove it, so just make sure to keep an eye on that so you don't damage it. And also, the cable for the, um, the CD drive will have to thread through the bottom, so just be careful with that. So to remove this, what you do is I put, like to stick my fingers in the CD drive slot and then run my finger, my nail or pry tool along that. And then once you get that edge, you can go around and pry up the rest that okay and then when you get a gap here you can also use that to kind of get some leverage if you can't do it through the from the CD drive okay and then just go around oh yeah that's another thing I'll have to disconnect is this uh, speaker cable let's see if I can do that there you go you just use your nails or a little pry tool and you kind of wiggle it side to side. Let's see if I can do this. Sorry for all the flipping over and everything. Uh, it's tough to do with one hand. Usually I'll use both my index fingernails. So just like that, remove it. Make sure you put it back the same way. Usually they'll put a mark to show that that side is up. So if it doesn't have a mark, you can do that yourself just so that you don't um, forget. Okay, and go along the whole thing. Okay. And then once you get to this side, it might be a little bit tough. Let's see here. You can do this side first on this one. No. Okay. It's a little bit stuck actually. Um, the wireless cables, you want to move them out from this so that you don't accidentally yank it when you lift this up. Okay. And then kind of just wobble it and pull on it and you should be able to eventually get this out. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. Once you got that corner, then you can just wiggle this. And remember the cable is actually attached under there, see? So you'll have to thread it back through this hole. So just be careful with that. Alright, now you got that out, you can set it aside. Okay. The power button is actually just right here, so it's not dif difficult to remove. Um, you will have to undo the adhesive because this cable is stuck under. So, what you have to do, open this back up. Okay. And once you get that, make sure to pull that adhesive off. Alright, now you can actually thread it through. Okay. This one, the hinge is kind of bad. Um, usually on these, um, these screws will sometimes get loose. So make sure to tighten them. Okay, make sure they get they stay tight because if they become loose and then the the hinge is like wobbly, it can actually break the the part that holds it in place, like here. Okay. All right. So once you got that, there's this one screw here. Remove that. Now after you remove that screw, you can actually remove the power button just like this. Okay. And then there's a little more adhesive here. This one's already broken, so don't need to be too gentle, but it's always good to just be careful. 
All right, so you got that. As you can see on this one, the power button, let me see here. You can actually see it's just like flat like this. And when you press it, you can tell it doesn't click properly. So the replacement button, it actually has this, um, let's see, this little black dimple thing on it. And that gives it a little bit more. And you can actually feel it clicking. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can definitely feel it. So, yeah. So this one, the power button broke. Um, I don't know if it was related, but their hinge also broke. I took that apart and actually um, glued that piece in. So, yeah. So usually to glue those in, I use like a JB Weld or a strong epoxy. Um, and that you have to actually let it... Um, Harden for 24 about 24 hours. Okay, so this let me see if I can do it with while it's in camera, it's hard to see. Okay. So this you want to put it back. Make sure it's in place. Okay. Alright. There's no clips or anything, right? It looks like it just goes in like that. Okay. Put the screw back in. Oh, it's tough to do with one hand. Okay. Switch sides of the camera. There we go. Just put that in. All right. Go and then make sure it goes back. A nice way to make sure it goes back the same way is you can put the old cable there side by side, and you can see it's supposed to have a fold here. So this one folds here. Make sure, like sometimes when they ship it, they put like extra folds that aren't supposed to be there. So just keep an eye on that. Okay, and then just thread this one through again. We'll hope to have the screen open slightly. Okay. So now, you know, you can set aside the old one. Okay. So now you got that in place. And then, um, just so you can see, um, there's the two USB ports and the audio jack here. So if you want to replace that, you can actually take that out. I believe under here, there's also a like one of those latches to remove the cable. Um, the power button, the cable is actually soldered to it. So if you wanted to replace, if you wanted to keep this cable and use the other, like a different button, you'd have to solder this, desolder and solder it onto the new one. Um, but usually you'll just buy it, it comes with this. Um, as you can see, the processor is also soldered on this. You can't remove the processor. Um, there's also, I believe this is video memory. And then you got the two RAM sticks, they're upgradable, um, wireless antenna, then you got the CMOS battery, and then the fan. So the fan seems to be attached to this um, piece. So just like on the 3000 series, if you want to change the fan, you have to remove these small screws after taking the whole uh, heatsink assembly. Actually, I believe this is the CPU and this is the GPU. And then that's why there's the video memory around it. <clears throat> but yeah, to remove the fan, you'd have to remove these tiny screws. And with the whole heat sink assembly, flip it over. And then you can remove the fan from this, um, separate it from this metal piece here. Okay, then you got the, I believe this is either for the touchscreen or the camera. And then this is the LCD connector, but they're combined into one connector. Um, then you got the DC jack. So if your charging port breaks, it looks like you have to actually remove the, let me see here, maybe you can do it with just removing the LCD connector. The LCD connector to remove it, actually it's, it should be one where you kind of pop, pop up. Let me double check. Um, it's difficult to see here. So it should be, let me make sure, it's so hard to do this.
this without being able to see with this camera in my way. But, um, it should pop off. Let's see here. Yep. Just like that. So, here you go. So that pops up just like that. You can see the connector, it just presses in place. And then you can actually remove this LCD cable by lifting it slightly and then wiggling it out just like that. So it does look like this DC jack, you'd have to remove the keyboard, which there's a bunch of screws. Um, since I don't need to do that repair for this one, I'm not gonna, not gonna do that. Um, if I do have to do that in the future, I'll eventually make another video. But for now, this is, I'm just mainly showing how to change the power button. Okay, uh, make sure to put this back. Right, and then this, make sure snap it back down. Okay, snaps back in place, just like that. All right, and we'll have to put back all the screws. So when you put this, the cover back, make sure to thread it through the, the hole, like I said earlier. And then also um, make sure the wireless antennas go back into their slot here. Um, but that's pretty much it. Once you got all of that, you just put it back together the same way you took it apart, and you're good to go. So this model is nicer than the 3000 series because you don't have to take the whole cover off just to replace the hard drive or the RAM or even the wireless card. And even the bat CMOS battery, they made it easily accessible. So this is actually a pretty good design. The keyboard is very easy to replace. Um, the screen, uh, when I opened it, was pretty easy to get to. So as far as repairability, this is one of the nicest, one of the nicer models. Um, the only thing that's kind of more difficult to get to is um, power button, the charging port, and the fan if you need to replace those. But yeah, so this model, if you plan to get one where you can upgrade it, put more RAM, put a large SSD or something like that, this is a very good model to get. Okay. Um, that's all. So if you have any questions, or um, just leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Alright, bye.